What's up guys? This episode we're going to talk about using Stripe to capture credit cards and process payments in your Rails application. Now this is covered by a lot of people but I want to talk about uh, the way that I design my Stripe implementations usually um, and just kind of talk about it in a rough sense so you can think about all the different things you're going to have to think about uh, when doing this. So the credit card capturing here is done by Stripe and that makes it really easy to capture the credit cards and not be PCI compliant, which is a set of rules that you basically need to uh, pass when you are actually saving credit cards on your own servers. So Stripe saves them in their own uh, server and basically it lets you paste in um, some form data for the credit card number and then they add a JavaScript thing that will look for the data Stripe attributes and then we'll take this credit card number and when you submit the form in your browser, the credit card number goes over to Stripe and then they give you back a token, which uh, the JavaScript will put into the form and then submit it. And then your server will never see the credit card number. Um, all you will see is the token, which represents a credit card in Stripe system. So when you talk to their API, you'll be able to uh, just simply use that which is really, really cool. So there's an awesome tutorial on how to do this using the uh, building a custom payment form tutorial on Stripe's website. This is going to be how we capture the credit card on the page. And then the next part, we'll talk about the other side of things, which is for um, either charging the user one time or for a subscription. So we're gonna talk about using a subscription and we're gonna build something similar to GoRails. Um, and so you'll be able to choose a plan when you check out. Um, and then you'll process that plan and then we'll automatically go ahead and uh, sign the user up for Stripe. Now the other piece of this that we're gonna talk about is that we're going to design this in a way that you will be able to add things like free trials and also automatically sort of have support for users who have signed up and then canceled. So that is a key piece that we're gonna talk about um, today. So I've got this little subscription Rails app here um, and there's literally nothing to it. I just scaffolded uh, this with an episode model and devise so we have these episodes and basically i want it when you click on one of these will take you to the new subscription page it will prompt you to subscribe we'll process your payment and we'll do that when you're logged in so we want this so that when you click on this this should ask you to sign in or sign up first um we're gonna do it that way because if we have you uh, using a free trial, we're going to need a payment form that doesn't force you to also register in the same form. Um, if you've ever done Ryan Bates' Railscast episode on Stripe, you're going to notice that uh, he, he does it in the same credit card in the same time. So if you went to teamtreehouse.com and you went to go purchase uh, Treehouse here, I believe there's a way to just buy this without going through the free trial. Um, let's see if we just take off trial as yes. This should allow us to, yeah, so if you were going to sign up for Treehouse, um, you would be able to choose your plan, simple as that, the plan ID is in the URL as well, and you would set up your account information and your credit card in the same form. So you would need to build a custom sort of registration process for this because you're going to handle both at the same time. Now, the benefit of splitting it up is for a site like this or GoRails um, is that users can create accounts. I can give out trials in the future um, and anyone who signs up and then cancels again can get taken to the same checkout process, which will be effectively just the payment information part of the form. So my checkout process is two steps and that saves me from having to build uh, a custom registration process like they have here. Obviously this is great um, to do and you can actually build this functionality where all of the steps are in one um, by simply kind of overriding, like if you're using device, you can override the device registration form and you can combine the two. 
but I get to save a step of building that and overriding that piece. Um, and you can as well if you make it a two-step process as opposed to a single one. So obviously people can drop off as part of that and you have to worry about that a little bit on the business side. But for saving development time, it's actually really great to split the two up. And you could put the two forms on the same page uh, if you would like and then use JavaScript to um, enable and disable the forms as necessary if you want to make two separate steps but they appear to be on the same page. Um, so yeah, that is kind of where we're going to head in this episode and that is what we're going to take a look at building now. So I have just this screencast thing with Devise and we're going to make it so that when you click on an episode, um, you'll get a, we'll probably have a button here to prompt you to sign up. So you can see that this episode exists, but in order to watch it, you'll have to pay to uh, see it. So let's dive into the code and see how that works now.